Parker that he was called away to the bedside of an ill friend. Send me these flowers. It's a good thing he did. I don't approve of young men refusing my invitation at the very last moment. I'll take the flowers, Mrs. Pringle. And it's such a shame you set the table so beautifully. And while it's getting late, someone could be coming at any minute. <coughs> How's the cook? Cook's in a tough butt, as always, ma'am. I'm glad to hear it. She's like an actress. The better the timber, the better the performance. As long as she serves a good dinner, I don't care how much she swears. The rest of you can just keep out of her way. Where's Gustav? I'm sorry to have to say, madam, but there's such an awful blizzard outside. He's sweeping off the side. <gasps> Dear me, yes! I should have ordered an awning, but who could have known that there'd be a storm like this? You have the place cards, Mother, and the diagram. Should I put them on the table? Yes, dear. Elaine, I'm going to check on your father. He's so helpless about his tie. Dunham, remove one plate. Remove one plate? But, madam, you wouldn't sit down with thirteen. Thirteen? Why, you're yes. Why, you're right. Thirteen? We can never sit down to thirteen. Oh, and it's all due to Mr. Harper's negligence. Sick friend, huh? He's just one of those careless men who never answers his dinner invitations on time. Oh, now look at the trouble he sent me to. His flowers, of course, to make me feel bad for him, but now what will I do? Elaine, help me think. There's always Uncle George. Oh, he never opens his head. Uh, Mr. Morgan, madam, he always tells a joke or two. Why, well, yes, you're right. How clever of you. Hello, Central. Yes, Lakeview 9571. I want, please. Elaine, your hair's much too tight. Pull it out, pull it out. Oh, come over here. Hello, Mr. Morgan. Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle from across the street. Oh, well, when he arrives, can you let him know that we want him to, for a dinner invitation? Yes. You're expecting him in about ten minutes? Okay. Thank you. Have him call. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, if that doesn't work, then what will I do? Well, Mother, I don't need to sit at the table. It's your party anyway. Everyone's much older than I am, Mary. Didn't I set you next to Oliver Farnsworth? Millions. He's worth millions. You won't be giving me any. Can't he marry you? Are you going to try to make a good match for yourself? I throw every eligible man I can at your head. Can't you do something for yourself? It's no use, Mother, you trying to marry me off to someone as important as he is. I, I'd be as nervous as him as the Prince of Wales. <gasps> the Prince of Wales? Well, I wouldn't give to have the Prince of Wales at my table. I was just telling Oliver Barnwood yesterday what I wouldn't give to have the Prince at my table. It would set my social position for life. And I, being such a good hostess, Oh, dear me, the phone. Hello, yes? Mrs. Sedgwick, this is Mrs. Pringle. Caught in a snow drift, can't get another car. Good, the widow can't come. Dunham, remove two plates. Oh, you poor dear. No, that would be foolhardy. No, it's okay. But what will we do without you? Have you really tried? Oh, I'm reduced to tears. Well, I'm glad she can't come. <laughs> Hello, thank you, 9571. Has Mr. Morgan's arrived yet? Dunno, with two less, less, we can save on two cocktails and at least four glasses of champagne. Oh, I'm sorry. Has Mr. Morgan's arrived yet? No. Well, can you not give him the invitation that I told you about earlier? Yes, it's too late. You understand? <laughs> thank you. Well, anyway, I have returned my indebtedness and saved on champagne, besides. The liquor's getting low, madam. What prohibition of entertaining so much? But he must sit at the head of the table. It looks so undignified when the man of the house is pushed to the side. There's no other way. There must be a woman at each end. Oh, twelve. I always forget how absurd it gives me. Oh, but I don't want any of these women at my table. Oh, Mrs. Darby, she's such a cat. I would never give her the honor. Mrs. Dunham, get that. Hello, Mrs. Springle's residence. A message? Yes, sir. What, sir? Mr. Darby, the doctor says your baby has the chicken. The chicken pox, Mother! <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Pring, Mr. Darby sends his apologies, but owing to the transmutability of the disease, he and Mrs. Darby feel obliged to regret, and also their house guests, Mr. and Mrs. Fleetwood. That's far out! Well, then you're only eight. Quick, the plates, Tom. Surely there's someone we can find at the last minute. Elaine. Um. The Hatwoods? They never serve drinks when they entertain. I can't afford to have them drink mine. Mr. Green? She's not interesting enough. Uh, the Conleys? They never invite us, even when we invite them all these times. Hester Longley? Not at the same table as you and Oliver Farnsworth. She's far too pretty, too clever. 
Where's our book? The Tubbers? The Tubbers? A lady of six in the family. That would get us back to 14. My father could sit at the head of the table. You telephone him. I'll rush and tell your father to hold up the drawing room. Ridgewood 9325. Hello, this is Elaine Pringle speaking. Which topper am I talking to? Oh, Ella, hello. I hope you haven't finished your supper yet. Mother and I were hosting a dinner party and everyone's been dropping out at the last minute. Yes, the blizzard. We were hoping that you and your mother could gather your family and meet us around the corner for supper. We thought we knew you well enough to invite you at the seventh hour like this. Oh, you could? Oh, wonderful. Done on six more plates. What? Oh, um, yes. Well, Donna, get mother quick! Right, of course, I'm sure it won't be a problem. Yes, lovely. Okay. Great Caesar, what have I done? What, what, Elaine, what is it? Oh, when you weren't here, and I, and I always lose my head, and I bundle things, I say, What, what is, is it? Are you just waiting like well, this? Well, I call the toppers, and Ella answered, and would it be okay if they all came to supper? Yes, when the was in the house, yes, and okay, now, now we're at 16. 16? But madam, the table's not that much. Oh, Elaine, that's just like you, no tact, no worldly wisdom. If I'd have been at the phone, I would have politely... But you weren't at the phone. You ought to attend to such messages yourself. You know I always lose my head. But the dish is mad. We only have 14 squads. I don't have to sit at the table. But I must not be disgraced. We'll have to make the best of it. Insert another board, Dunham. You would really have to go through all the trouble inserting another board. If I go and push the chairs... Have you forgotten that Mr. Morgan's weighs something like 250 pounds and Miss Conley has no waistline? It simply can't be done. Okay. Cook's in a rage, madam. She says she is only prepared for 14. Well, I can't help it. She'll have to prepare for 16. Have her open up vegetables or cans of soup. Put the ice cream forms in the gelatin forms. I won't eat any. You know, I'll pretend them on a diet. But of course, I don't have to sit at the table. <sighs> the telephone! Don't answer it. Now what? Hello? Yes? Oh, Jessica! Oh, Mr. Farnsworth. Mr. Oliver Farnsworth? Oh, his secretary. He asked you to make his excuses. Was called away on business at the last minute. Can't come. Oh, how dare he? How dare he? And at the last moment like this, he promised he would come. What couldn't come because business, ha, huh, didn't want to exert himself, was afraid of getting cold in the blizzard, as if, as if he didn't have the half a dozen limousines to carry him right to the door. Oh, and he was going to meet you, and now I don't know when I can give you another chance like that again. Oh, I'm perfectly furious I won't be treated like this. Perhaps you really did have business. Oh, and I, being one of the most important hostesses in this city, people clamoring to receive my invitations, and he's not coming. He was my most important guest, such a man's man, important financially. Every man wants to meet him, and oh, I'm perfectly furious. Thank God for the blizzard. Uh, well, was, uh, Mr. Farnsworth, you're back to 13, unless you don't want me to sit at the table. Of course I want you to sit at the table. No. Miss Morgan was at the door, ma'am. Mr. Morgan? But I told him to not to come. Yes, you could not have received the second message before I heard him explaining to Mr. Pringle how happy he was to receive your invitation. Now we're back with 13. I was going to go to bed instead. No, you should come. 13. Okay, we're back to where we started. Well, Annie said there were several motors making their way up the driveway. It's late now and Cook's swearing about the dinner getting too dry. Oh, I won't answer it. I should say not. Hello, yes. Oh, Jessica, yes. Oh, dear, you can't come. Caught in the snowdrift. Oh, my dear. No, your husband's right. That would be foolhardy. Yes, put on a mustard plaster. Hot toddy, go to bed. So sorry. Oh, well, I guess we're about where we started. This is all wrong. Only six who were invited originally are going to be here. The diagram's all wrong. Oh, I shall go mad. People ought to know whether they're coming or not, but they regret and accept and regret and accept. And, oh, this is my last dinner party, my very last, a fiasco, an utter fiasco. A haphazard crowd thrown together at the last minute when I prepared the table so beautifully. Oh, this is my last dinner party. I'm through, through with society, with friends, with, with liquor. I'm 
I'm gonna drink it myself. I'll drink my liquor myself instead of offering ground taste to the whole town. <gasps> I'm through. They're with men like Oliver Farnsworth. I don't care how important they are, how rich they are, how influential they are. They're nothing without courtesy and consideration. <sighs> Didn't want to meet a pretty girl. Didn't want to marry her. Well, guess what? He's not good enough for you. You shouldn't marry Oliver Farnsworth. I won't allow it. If you try to elope or anything with Oliver Farnsworth, I'll call it off. I hate Oliver Farnsworth. A note from Mr. Farnsworth, madam. A note from Mr. Farnsworth. Yes. There were two strange gentlemen at the door. They presented that letter. He said he was the secretary. All the other guests are in the drawing room. I counted 12, including you, Mr. Pringle, and Miss Elaine. But the two strange gentlemen are waiting for your answer. One of them looks so familiar, but I just can't place it. Can't place his face! Elaine, it's the Prince of Wales! You see, they said that either Central disconnected you, or you hung up on him. He was going to tell you how Mr. Farnsworth knew he had trouble keeping an engagement uptown. The Prince of Wales waiting for me in my lower hall. <sighs> but now we're back to 13 since Jessica and her husband just dropped. Does the secretary, he is the bodyguard. Why, yes, you're right. Elaine, the secretary, serve the, serve the cocktail. Oh my goodness, I'll bring the prince in with me. Everyone can sit where they want to. Wasn't it nice of Mr. Farnsworth to send a prince in this place? Didn't I always say Oliver Farnsworth was the most reputable of all men? I think I shall like Mr. Farnsworth. Oh, silly girl, it's too late to like the Oliver Farnsworth. It's time to like the Prince of Wales. Oh, I always manage to be the most successful of hostesses. Thank God for the blizzard. 